Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Christian prayer is a wonderful gift. Jesus today promises that our Father hears our prayers for his name's sake. He tells us how to pray, what to pray, even why to pray. And thus prayer is his gift to us, so that with all boldness and confidence we may pray as dear children of our dear Heavenly Father. So how do we pray? Now prayer is not some kind of magical formula or word spells that manipulates or bends God's will to our will. Everyone prays, but not everyone prays according to God's word. But that's Christian prayer, to pray according to his ordering and his promises. Remember when his disciples asked him how to pray in the other Gospels, he said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father, thereby showing us, as in today's Gospel in John, the prayer is given to the Father in the name of Jesus. To pray in the name of Jesus means that all prayer is according to him according, that is, to his word, that is, trusting in him to keep his word of promise. He promises to hear and he promises to answer prayers that are prayed according to his word and in his name. We pray in his name because, as St. Peter says, there is no other name given to men in which we shall be saved. So that's how we pray. So then what should we pray for? We can pray, as Jesus says, for anything, trusting in him by faith. So by anything, he means anything that he has promised, according to his word. Trusting in Jesus, we ask for anything that he has promised to give. Otherwise, if we pray outside of his word and outside of his name, our prayers are full of doubts and wonders and worry. As St. James says, let anyone ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. So also our prayers, when they're not prayed according to God's word, like a wave of sea driving one about. Failing or refusing to ask for what he's promised, that also is praying with doubt in his word. So it's simply this. The things we pray for are what he promises. That's what you ask for. And if words fail you, if you don't know how to pray, again, remember what he told his disciples. Pray the prayer he taught you. Which actually, that prayer, Lord's Prayer, asks for everything that is needed for your faith and life. So you know, how to pray, and what to pray for. But this begs the question of why we should pray. And today Jesus answers. The, prom the Father has promised to hear your prayer. And hearing your prayer, he has promised to give you joy and a free conscience. This prayer will give you consolation in the midst of cross and sorrow. So it was that you were instructed, according to the small catechism, second commandment, call upon his name in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Again, prayer in his name is confidently looking to him, Jesus, for your every help, indeed your only help, in every trouble, anxiety, worry, sorrow, or need. You have help, comfort, peace, and hope. You have the answer to your prayers. 
because Jesus promises to give these things. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is, the mediator, the intercessor we heard today, your redeemer, your savior. He has chosen you as his friends from before the foundation of the world, even before you were born. And he chose you to give to you everything that the Father has promised. That is to make you his brothers and children then of his and your heavenly Father. And by his suffering and death, you are forgiven, renewed, restored, made holy, heirs of eternal life, that is, heirs of everything that is his. So you might have noticed today that he said, most assuredly, or truly, truly, or amen, amen, yea, shall it be. And that's the promise, the promise that everything he says to you in today's gospel is true. Absolutely true, always true, always was, always will be. By his name, he swears, because he is truth in the flesh, and he cannot lie. He gives you his word and his name as your own, as a pledge and guarantee that you are God's child, and thus God hears your prayers. Ask anything that is good for body and soul, that lies upon your heart, that torments your conscience, that presses or weighs down upon you, in which you can find no help or answer in yourself or in anyone else. Ask anything of the Father in the Son's name, and He will give it to you. Why? Because the Father loves you. He gave His Son for you. He has redeemed you. And so loving you, he cannot deny you, nor the intercession that his Son and the Spirit makes for you. Now, if all this pray all the time, pray for everything, sounds too hard, again, you're not alone. The religious of Jesus' day, they had made the prayers of God's people complicated. Jesus tells us that they offered long prayers in the synagogues and at the street corners. But for them, prayer was not looking for help from God, not praying according to God's promise. But he tells us they prayed to get attention from others, to look impressive. But instead, the Gospels actually commend to us the prayers of the weak, the suffering, those grieving, the outsiders. Think of it. Think about how they pray. Lord, have mercy. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Say the word only, and my servant will be healed. Jesus, Son of David, save us. It's not hard prayers. And again, to his disciples, our Father. A prayer that even the youngest among us is given to pray given to them in their baptism, as we saw last week for Silas, a prayer that they can pray until their dying day, when all prayers are answered. But where else? If we think prayer is too hard, well, actually, everything we've been about today is prayer. The prayers of the church are the faithful expression of Jesus' teaching today. We pray today in the liturgy. The liturgy of the church is the prayer of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. I'm a poor, miserable sinner. Forgive me all my sins. You are forgiven. Prayers in the promise. Prayers answered according to the promise. We receive God's word and return this word to him in prayer and in his name. I've really heard no better confession of this truth that everything we're about here when we're gathered together in public worship is prayer than the introduction to our last hymnal, Lutheran Worship, written by Reverend Professor and Dr. Norman Nagel. He said, Our Lord speaks and we listen. Our Lord bestows what he says. Faith is born from what is heard. Faith acknowledges the gifts received with eager thankfulness and praise. Music 
is drawn into thankfulness and praise, enlarging and elevating our adoration of our gracious giver, God. Saying back to him what he has said to us, we repeat what is most true and sure. So it is that we pray and we continue to pray today according to his word and in his name, trusting in this promise that the Father has promised to hear us. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Psalm 50. Or Jesus who cries out, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Or today, most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. Pray confidently in this faith and you will be heard. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.